This is about the match format for the Pro Billiard Series. You know, the one with the shootout. Tiebreaker formats in sports, like shootouts, always lead to discussion. Some point out that they're thrilling, and they are. Others criticize them for giving undue weight to one aspect of the skill that goes into the game. It's hard to deny, though, that we actually like them when they're happening. When you have something that a player's mother and a player's coach can't put their eyes on and everybody else can't take their eyes off, you've got something. Let's take a closer look. The format is this. First, there's a race to four, then there's another race to four, and if either player wins both races to four, the match is over. If they split the two races to four, it goes to a shootout. The players alternate shots, each shooting four shots total, almost spot shots, two from the left and two from the right. They're not spot shots, though, because the 10 ball is racked below the spot in the position that it's normally found in a 10 ball rack. If they're tied after the four attempts, it goes to a sudden death phase of the shootout. Here's an example of a couple of shots from Arizona a few weeks ago. All right, let's pause it right there, because you're about to see something remarkable in the next minute or so. And I'm not talking about what happens on the pool table. I'm talking about Mark White and John Lehman and George Teachea and Gomez and Alex Pagolan and Tyler Steyer and Damian Pominick and about 25 others not checking their cell phone. 35 people not checking their cell phone here translates to much larger numbers not changing the channel. This group's TV production is excellent, and it's pretty cool that my friend Freddie Ogner saw a U.S. Pro Billiard Series match on the TV while walking through Los Angeles International Airport last month. People's ability to make these shots generally tracks their overall skill, like their Fargo rating. There's two other things that contribute here. Who's seeing them today? Who's on today? And who's ready to perform under pressure? These guys are both stuck at the top of the Ferris wheel. Two referees in view here. In the U.S. Road Billiard Series, every game is racked by a referee, which is a very cool thing and I hope becomes the standard. Naoki Oi from Japan is shooting. His opponent has already made the shot, so Naoki must make it to survive. You'll notice he hits it almost with stun, going two rails through the center of the table into the side rail. <laughs> kind of him to get out of the way so quickly so we can watch the cue ball. Jesus Atencio from Venezuela uh, starts the next shot. This is from the other side of the table now. You'll notice Jesus doesn't use stun. Instead he uses a rolling cue ball and goes two rails to the short rail, to the center of the short rail at the head of the table. Players are about split on these two ways to approach the shot. We'd like to know how to think about the Pro Billiard Series match format, and in particular how to compare it in an apples-to-apples -apples way with other match formats. If you focus on the shootout in isolation, you say, oh, well, the match is determined by this one-off shot. But the shootout never happens in isolation. It's always part of a match that includes the two races to four. So we really need to look at the whole structure together. And we can go a step further. Once we have a match format, we can ignore the details and pretend the match is something that happens in a darkened room and we don't see exactly what's going on. Our focus for the match format is what goes in and what comes out. What goes in is two players of a given skill difference, and what comes out is a winner. If we do it a lot of times, we're able to see how discriminating this particular match format is. In this particular example, we feed in lots of pairs of players 50 points apart in skill, and the higher rated player wins 75% of the time. And that's the important measure. So think about this idea of how discriminating a match format is. If what happened in that black room is the players played a race to 100, then the yellow player would win virtually 100% of the time. If what happened was something basically unrelated to pool skill, like egg juggling or a spelling bee, then that yellow player would win about 50% of the time. A race to 10 would be more discriminating than a race to 6. And here's the key point of this video. If you find two formats that discriminate the same, they're functionally equivalent, functionally the same. What that means is if these two formats, A and B, discriminate the same, then the degree to which, for example, the best player wins or the top players get to later rounds is the same. If, for example, A is a race to five and B is some other format that discriminates the same as a race to five, then you don't need to open up the B box to examine the furniture. You're free to examine whether B matches take less time, have less variation in match time, are more dramatic at different stages of the match, or have more thrilling finishes. You're free to optimize for these other things that may be important to you, losing nothing.
Let's look at an example where we can actually calculate how discriminating the two formats are. For instance, suppose A is a straight race to 11, and suppose B is a best of three raises to five. Before we go further, think about which of these two you think would be more discriminating. The Fargo rate calculator will tell us how discriminating a race to 11 is for a 50-point skill gap, and we'll see that the higher rated player wins 78.9% of the time. For the best of three races to five, we start by plugging a single race to five into the calculator. Then there's three ways for the higher rated player to win this match. He could win the first two, that's 70% of 70%, or 49%, or he could win one out of the first two, the first or the second, and then win the third. When we add these three possibilities together, we see best of three races to five and a single race to 11 are essentially the same. So which is better? There's a lot to be said for format B. You're 40 minutes into the match and the score is three to three. If you're playing format A, it's a good time to go get some lunch and come back in another 40 minutes. With format B, at the end of this game, somebody will be on the hill to establishing a foothold. Format B is more dramatic all the way through, so why do we not tend to see it over races to 11? Think about the range and match lengths. Format A can take as few as 11 and as many as 21 games. Format B can take as few as 10 and as many as 27. For Format B, that's too big of an uncertainty in match length and too long of a high end. Let's look here at a series of race lengths. Race to 4 at the bottom, race to 12 at the top, and you can see just how discriminating they are. Again, these are for players 50 points apart as an example. You can get these numbers from the Fargo Rate app, and we get the same numbers when we examine the matches in our Fargo Rate database. You can also see where the best of three of short races fits on the same scale of discrimination with straight race format. So doing a best of three races to three is about like doing straight races of six to seven. Doing a best of three races to four is about like doing a straight race between eight and nine. And we just used as an example that a best of three races to five is functionally equivalent to a straight race to 11. They're equally discriminating. The chips are not all in on exactly how the Pro Billiard Series match format discriminates, but from our analysis of Austria and Turkey and last year's and this year's U.S. Pro Billiard Series matches, it appears it's roughly in this range here about like a race to eight, straight race to eight, 10 ball. Nine ball's an easier game than 10 ball. The top players run out more. And for those players, that makes nine ball less discriminating at a given race length than 10 ball. So this is equivalent to a somewhat longer nine ball race. So I invite you to tune in for the next one. It starts February 9th in Wisconsin. I think you may find yourself more engaged than you are for a typical straight race format because every game is at most a couple games away from an important juncture. It will be available at no cost on World Billiard TV on YouTube.